Hello everyone, today's talk is titled Undefinable Communication. And what that means is that the world of definitions is always in front of us. We can always open a book and get imagery for something we don't know. And so uh, even the even internet gives us that access to with the globalization that's been happening. Aside from the meaning that terminology has and how you're interpreting these words, there is a comfort that a being finds simply by your mere existence. It's just a natural quality you have, is that you can appreciate things both in their movement and in their stillness. And if you begin appreciating things in stillness and in silence, you begin seeing it's as if wisdom was a lack of movement in an elusive world. When you begin seeing this, you understand that you are, it's not up to you to interpret if your world is elusive. If you do, then you're working with beliefs and again you're working with toys and it's not real for you. If you let life show you, if you suddenly have something in your life suddenly show you that the nature of reality is different, that experience alone is more than any word you could look up. And so regardless of how many uh, words I find to define a moment where I'm experiencing totality, uh, it's unspeakable. There's no word that can give this a, dualist, a dualistic boundary. There can be no spectrum because the whole spectrum is being observed. And so that is, that is simply a graceful ability in, in humankind. You see, if you want to move in your room, in your workspace, if it's cluttered, you have no room to work. And simply if your room has too many stuff in it, you can't move as much. So it's not that you need to get rid of your room or you need to completely leave. You need to see that you're present in this room. You need to see what the stuff is that you're considering present here. Right? You need to see what, where your meanings are coming from and not in a manner where you're seeking something like, you know, as if like you haven't ate, you know. It's, it's more like an intuitive hunger where you are seeking and that knowing can then be translated as perhaps a hunger. So it's like, it's your re huge want. Think of it as much as you wanted your desires, thinking of now, at first, desiring enlightenment. It's crazy, they told us to stay away from desire, but everyone seems to desire nirvana, no? So it's not a desire thing. And that was perhaps a really um, multidimensionally perfect planning by how the Buddha communicated his teachings. In that uh, you limit Instead of thinking that, gosh, uh, this whole, I don't have any space to move in this world, that instead of it's like a small room, it's everything, it's as if uh, before you've explored the whole world, you're making it in your mind. And so you're reacting to that world because that uh, action is real for you, and that action of conception. So we must move beyond uh, uh, meaningless shenanigans that we create ourselves for ourselves, you know? You know, not everybody folds their clothing. You know, they just, you know, I just sometimes throw my jacket on the bed, right? So similarly, uh, you don't always linearly let go of things. You're, it's, it's always a blend of just uh, different states of being where there's still and where's movement. And so uh, we must see that we are even, when we say someone's stupid, someone's smart, that is wrong. That it's as if we're not acknowledging uh, the vertical dimensions to the horizons of each individual in the sense that it is this, it, like for example, There is no test other than the one that is the deepest one. The reason you need to seek deep is because you, you don't want to go too many meaningless uh, 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 routes into your own fictional assumptions, you know, you know? Clarity needs to be something found in the moment because in the moment you're certain that you're here. So what every human being, whether religious, whether, you know, 
non-religious, whether uh, spiritual, non-spiritual, uh, it's like, um, how would I say it? What every being shares is the fact that they are here within a moment. And so you might think that others are real to you and that person there, you know your friend, but really, if you were to know your moment, you could see you don't know anything. And so the ability to be sincerely clear with yourself gives you the honesty that is the platform to revelations where you are moving into greater bodies. Because if you do not have trust in life, uh, objects seem to be the only things you might trust. You know, and so then it becomes a game for you. You know, it's like life is good to be a game, but only in its, in its. Um, how do I say it? The tools are external. Every ideology, everything that you're uh, found, it is present within your moment of observance. Where the observer is heading is conditionless, and in a sense, it is into a sense of from. It's as if you suddenly come into a sense of chronology in regards to time and space, or in a certain way, and suddenly you go back into a simultaneous sense of intelligence, but you have access to all things. Why do you think it is that they say that when people uh, pass away, they see their whole, they see a movie of their whole life? It is simply because they are becoming aware of their sense of presence that existed in a way where they had always confronted your life. So to uh, to be honest with you, that feeling of guilt that many beings may get even after uh, their physical form has deteriorated is actually something that was there your whole life. What that means is that regardless of how much think we have time or not to realize something, the, the intelligence of a realization where nirvana is found present is in a simultaneous acknowledgement of everything. It's a collective sense of being. It's a collective sense of knowing. And this collective sense of knowing is that which is keeping your shape. It is, it is the observer that is keeping you here, similar to how you are keeping, for, for example, this YouTube video playing. It's an existential allowance in which you are the greater intelligence, even in your illusion. Do you think that when you're in your illusion, there is never a possibility for enlightenment? The reason you can even be enlightened is because you already are. It's something within you that you have the potential for and that is why you can. And so let there be no story that tells you that your direct experience is not enough or is not complete. It's all about your experience. It's your life. Self-remembrance, self-awareness, and then a realization that your external form is here to be compassionate and efficient. Efficient means no time for, uh, uh, how do I say it? Uh, distraction, delusion, okay, uh, and a sense of playing a game when there are more important things to be done. The difference perhaps in, in, in the greatest leaders of mankind were that they realized there's bigger things to be done than sitting on my couch. And that bigger thing was their engagement. You know, it's, it's how you are engaging with your life and how much value you begin seeing. So what that means is that whether you're a spiritual leader or whether you're a um, how would I say it? A leader who is thinking that you're only, for example, a leader in our thoughts or in, in a, thought, a thought leader, a leader that is, for example, just a, a, a person who just suddenly, regardless of your sense of orientation and space of time, you go contribute great understandings in, in science and philosophy, you know, you will see that the profoundest element here that we're all forgetting is this existential awareness that is present that we can't define. It's unknown. You can't define it. You can only reject it and feel comfortable about your beliefs, but to go in it and to experience it is what the yogis silently said uh, in, 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 their, in, their, you know, in their meditations in the mountains. Their presence said it. That it's as if you see that seriousness that, for example, uh, let, let's say like this, that seriousness you find when you're late for somewhere and you got a presentation to do, regardless of whatever scenario, that same intensity, or let's take the intensity of the general. Let's say a general who's about to go into war right now. And the intensity of the general is that, no, there's more important things. If I, for example, uh, get drunk, my whole army could die tomorrow, you know? So it is your intensity in how real you see the reality you have now, in how much you see that you're untouched regardless of all the touches. It is now time for man move beyond the conception where space and time are bound to certain form. And you must confront it because the moment you become honest with yourself, extremely honest,
very authentic and naturally present and aware, self-aware, you begin seeing that your honesty is might be making you a simple man and you might feel like an honest fool, but there is no lie or illusion that can come in your reality. Because you are honest and you are aligned and seeing the value of your direct experience as nothing you can interpret but a present in omniscience. We, you must not think that you are a limitation to then even get more limited. No, 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 limitation is nothing to talk about, but uh, something to observe eternally. <laughs> And seeing that even that sense of infinity you get, which is based on form, dissolves and you get a sense of infinity from nothing. So there have been times where I've been sitting, you know, I've been standing, you know, uh, waiting for a bus and just simply the moment time and space has stopped and it's as if, it's as if, I, I don't know how, how to say it. It's like for me, there was no experience of time. It's as if no time had passed. I was still in the same place when I opened my eyes, the people were right there. But I, it's as if I got absorbed in my internal experience, which was an observance of both everything that is real to me in the moment, which I just became everything. Do you know? It's like I was totally even aware of every one there but not as if I'm someone in a certain position feeling them in other positions the collective knowing your sense of intelligence existential intelligence not the intelligence that you're interpreting or someone is giving you based on an IQ score the intelligence of your knowing and awareness to life do you know what that means is we might find someone who is a great theorist and has so much knowledge, but if that guy doesn't know how to, you know, handle, let's say, the oven, that is not intelligence, you know? So existential intelligence, that which is uh, keeping your existence present is what is you are seeking and in a sense is, as playfully as Romy says, is seeking you. Ask questions never asked before, so you will receive answers that not even you have ever seen. Um, organization is needed in how you function in society and in everywhere, and you need to be organized and you need to have situational awareness. Your situational awareness actually provides the, the energy for your uh, organization. The more aware you are of what's going on, the more certain you are of the environment. This is in regards to social structure and any position you go in the world as a communicator and as an individual. However, in certain moments, you will see this individuation is also very collectively being present. As this individuation is very collectively being present, it is its own allowance as, uh, for, for it to, in this physical plane of existence, to be a co-creator. So simply, the profound aspect is that you, as a collective being, has given, have given uh, your individual aspect of being an, an allowance, an opportunity to exist in a certain shape, to then utilize that certain shape to project simultaneous presences in which it then explores also other shapes which the collective knowing is keeping. So the only reason you might suddenly feel that, uh, how would I say it? It's a trust in your collective knowing that is transparent. There is no image, but it's known. It's, it's like you feel it, you know it, beyond whatever. So similarly, <laughs> everything's so similar, you know. Similarly, uh, we notice that regardless of our projection of where we, where we, are, where we are from, when we have an ability to acknowledge others' realities, we have an ability to see that real within ourselves in, that se in a sense too. So what that means is actually people are not sensitive to it, but human communication is multidimensional as shit. Yeah? <laughs> or maybe, let me use proper language, it's as multidimensional as uh, different elevations on a mountain. <laughs> You, you begin seeing that uh, it's all a, at first a game of tolerance. You're choosing how much you're tolerant in just being in the way you're suffering. And what that means is if you feel something's wrong, uh, guess what? If you don't attempt to fix it, it's gonna, feel, it's gonna still be wrong. You know? Unless you internally uh, be observant in a way where you're not keep, uh, keeping your value greater than yourself. Uh, 
I heard this very profound Swami, he's an American Swami, and he was talking about his experiences in the Himalayas and how uh, this, this Swami is actually, um, let me tell you what kind of explorer he is. He is he's a guy who had, uh, in his teens left America, left Chicago, and just went to live a life uh, where he was searching spiritually. In other words, he, it's like material, he was seeking beyond, a purpose beyond. And so he was taken to India and in the Himalayas, one of his lessons that was given was that this wiser uh, uh, guru uh, teaches this sadhu, teaches this person who's seeking a realization, uh, that if you are living alone, if you're sleeping alone at night, you know, if you think that you are higher than the animals around you, because in, in, in Hillas there's you know there's so many dangers, you know, so many dangerous animals, you know, the monkeys with teeth and tigers and whatnot. So, anyways, uh, it, the lesson was that if you think you are greater than these animals, if you think that you are more, and at the same time, if you show that you fear, if you show that you can fall into illusion that you do not know yourself, uh, the the guru said to the sadhu. Uh, they will kill you. So what that means is animals don't care. You know, human beings have sympathy. If you're in a place where there's animals, uh, you need to really be existentially aware because if you're not, you will be, in a sense, you know, uh, food. <laughs> so, uh, what that means is that perhaps the sadhu would go be present in the forest and he'd be this, uh, he'd in a sense be like this man, this mystic, who'd be alone in complete solitude in nature in the cocoon that nature is to give you understanding of your emptiness and so he's, he's, he's there and as he's sitting there you see if you choose to think you're superior to the life that is in front of you you cannot co-create and because you will make the effect of the, what is in front of you the imagery in front of you one that you, because you're saying you're individual, you're making that as an individual who can destroy your individuality. So you are not going in a dynamic where uh, solid objects are being clashed. It's not a sword fight in ideology in regards to the advice that that yogi gave. It's a simple ability to know that if you were to as compassionately love the life in that forest, you would always be in the present moment to acknowledge any danger as it comes. So what that means is you would not have fear because you have a trust in life beyond the temporal. Fear comes from a temporal image that's about to end. Any image that's about to end, it fears, even if the image is your idea or if it's someone else's. Do you know what that means? And the image does not mean you die, actually. Many people who actually kill uh, the person who they kill doesn't die. You are untouchable on some aspects of your existence, you know. You, that person reality, it's just that they are disconnected uh, into being in the same projection. So what that means is as man is recognizing this reality is similar to a holographic simulation, his understanding of the simulation is that the simulations are present with one another in regards to design, are, but in a sense are also present in ways where there, there is an, uh, a platform where individuality is creating in new ways which becomes its design. So what that means is one aspect you're inspiring uh, and another aspect you're receiving inspiration. And so this becomes, at first it's an ideology thing for you, oh gosh, what's, what's inspiring? what's my ambition, but then it becomes your life force. It becomes that knowing that if you forget your plans for a day, you still, your being, your whole being knows and will go towards what it is that it must do. And so you will see that you will walk in doing your actions in ways that you, it will even surprise yourself as an observer. Because you got, many people might not recognize, but in the way that Mr. Within can communicate in the context that he's communicating, it's simply that Mr. Within uh, is an awareness of an omniscience that is seeing the simultaneous projection of an ability of an idea to observe itself outside of its body. And as you find Mr. Within, guess what? There's nothing to find and so you know, you know everything. <laughs> and I am, I am talking very playfully here. But the search is one where it does not need arrogance to then limit the clarity in your perception. Do not be ignorant. Be gentle, be calm, be efficient, and be compassionate. Efficiency uh, comes from compassion. 
And what that means is that you might feel like not sharing something, but when someone shares something with you, you're like, why not? Because that is intelligence, that is efficient, Do you know? You put away your cultural individualization and you become uh, as a hundred times more compassionate than the Dalai Lama and you help your fellow being, whether it's an animal, whether it's a human, whether it's a tree, whether it is abstraction trying to present itself into form, whether it's uh, form leaving into abstraction. Whatever dimension, whatever your multidimensionality communicates, you as the advanced communicator, you as the part of consciousness, are your certainty and know that which will be done will be done. And so that is when you can have a party. That is when your idea can actually go celebrate, you know? There is a reason people are uh, balancing their w daily lives with uh, relieving it with having events that are beyond them. It's because they want new experiences. Humanity wants novelty, but its greatest novelty comes from its tolerance to share. And so we must have cultural understanding and understanding in any branch of ideology. We must cover the whole spectrum to a degree that we know we are beyond the spectrum as we always are. Much blessings, and in the blessing that you are, be a blessing to everything else. Namaste.